The question we all want to know is, are we alone? And now we have eyes on the ground. Perseverance is ready to answer that question for us. Countdown confirmed. Perseverance, safe For the last four years, I've been recreating the surface of Mars in my lab at the University of Oxford. What I've most been interested in is whether I could recreate lakes and other liquid water environments that might have existed on the surface of Mars about three and a half billion years ago. Where it gets really interesting is that now NASA has landed a rover, the Perseverance rover, right in a crater that might have once hosted a lake. Although there's no water on the surface of Mars today, there is inescapable evidence that it was once present. When you look at it from space, you'll see certain features that jump out at you as being quite similar to those we have on Earth. You'll see sweeping valleys that look like they were carved from liquid water. These are actually pebbles that are a few centimeters in diameter. What you can see when you look at the pebble outlines is that they have rounded shapes. So they've been basically rounded during a transport process. And they're too large to have been moved and rounded by wind processes. And so the only way we can actually get this rounding is by water flow. You'll see gigantic canyons. This one here is the Valles Marineris. And this thing would stretch from Los Angeles to New York. This thing is truly colossal. And I remember when this image first came up and we were all huddled around a giant screen looking at this. It actually took us a while to really hit home. Oh gosh, actually this is the first evidence from on the ground of water flow on Mars. We see great big ice caps at the poles, much like we do on Earth as well. We see signs from space that are immediately recognizable as great big channels enormous floodplains, the largest in the solar system, that would have excoriated their way across plains as large as the continent of North America. We see chemical signatures, we see minerals that have water locked in their structures that could have only formed when that water was freely available. And we also see both of these coming together in the form of certain features that we know from studying them on Earth only form where there's bodies of water. Where Perseverance is sat is a crater called Jezero, and why Jezero Crater was selected is that it combines these two key indicators of water in one site. And how deltas form is where you have a river flowing across the surface of a planet, and in its water it's containing all kinds of churned up sediments. And then as soon as that river reaches an open body of water, like a lake or an ocean, it dumps all of that sediment load. Why the Perseverance mission is so exciting to me is that for the past four years, it was those carbonates that are found in its delta that I was trying to recreate in my lab. Perseverance has been in the making for a very long time, and it's a roving scientific suite of instruments. It's a moving laboratory, and it's absolutely incredible the things it can do. finally get to hear the, the sounds of grains of sand being turned over and the, the sounds of that very thin atmosphere being, being blustered around in this crater. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And the first times I saw the pictures from the surface, it was like being in Star Wars and learning about whole new places. I couldn't believe it. And um, here, five, six years later I am with, um, with my PhD on the surface of Mars. I'm, I feel very, very fortunate. Altimeter data confirms that Ingenuity has performed its first flight, the first flight of a powered aircraft on another planet. What's incredible about the little Ingenuity craft is that this is the first time anything has been airborne on another planet at all, not just Mars. So the image we're looking at on the screen is the image from our onboard navigation camera showing us hovering above the surface of Mars. How incredible! <laughs> the idea is that it might be able to scout ahead to places of interest for future astronauts and look for any hazards. Perseverance has four main scientific goals. First is to search for habitable conditions. The second is it's interested in searching for biosignatures. The third mission goal is to harvest and then cache together samples of interest to return to Earth. 
The absolute dream is to one day have a sample of Martian soil returned from Desera Crater, from those carbonates that you can see from orbit, and to compare that to the kinds of crystals that I was forming in my lab, and just see how similar are they, what do they look like. And the final goal of the Perseverance mission is to prepare for humans to come and live there one day. People who are fit, people who are top in their fields, people who are experts, people who have a, a spirit of adventure. But I would say most critically, you need people who have the right temperament. Think about a mission to Mars. What is it? Is it outdoor stuff or is it confinement? And then I see somebody that says, I have a stamp collection, I do a lot of reading, I enjoy watching movies, and I'm thinking, that might be good for confinement. Artemis is a key step in getting humans to Mars. Right now, launching humans from Earth is extremely expensive because we're just so heavy getting off this gigantic rock. Instead, if we can have a base set up on the moon, we can have supplies ready to go from there, manufactured on the moon, that can then be launched straight to Mars. And so this makes it cheaper and easier to be launching things not just to Mars, but perhaps around the solar system as well. Once you've got to Mars, there are a whole host of problems that you wouldn't even think about based on life on Earth. So you need something to protect you from essentially exploding, or at least having your skin all stretched out and the blood boiling and getting the bends, things like that. The way spacesuits are designed now, they're mostly pressurized spacecraft. Essentially, they're almost like a mini spaceship. Things like how do you maintain water? How do you recycle your water supply? How do you recycle waste? Here we are at the throne. Number two, right here. It's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim. How do you keep making the best of everything you've got without throwing things away? And they're all problems that we're going to have to overcome if we're ever going to be a spacefaring interplanetary species. I've had a very long time to think about whether I would go to Mars, and so I'm not being flippant when I say yes, absolutely. Would absolutely love to go. It would be the most fabulous adventure. There'd be so much to do and explore and so many questions, endless questions. So yes, absolutely. <laughs>